Hey, today I'm going to be talking about episodes 55 through 57 of Legend of Junhuan. It's finally time for Junhuan to return to the palace, and her new makeup is amazing. She looks so good. Less amazing is Guo Wang waiting to send her off. Wang Ye. Gong Ying Xi Fei Hui Gong. Before she leaves, Jen Huan doesn't forget to get some petty revenge. She calls out Jing Bai, the sour-faced ringleader and her main tormentor. She tells her that she will never forget the care she has shown for her over the last three years. Were it not for the lead abbess begging her to be forgiving, it seems like Jen Huan would have killed her then and there. Instead, she settles on 20 lashes. She does make some changes to management though and puts another more steel-willed nun in charge over the easily swayed former main abbess. With that, the entourage heads off. Junhuan is welcomed back to the palace in style. Her new official story is that she gave birth to fourth prince, went off to the mountains to pray for the country, and, well, she's back now. The resemblance to the previously deposed Junhuan? Ah, coincidence. Okay, but really, of course everyone knows, but the emperor has spoken. The only redeeming part here, Mi Zhuang is so cute. She's so happy to see her best friend back. The emperor has made a big show of her return, walls painted red, countless treasures, flowers, etc., making sure that everyone knows that this is now his number one girl. Zhen Huan immediately notices the incense, I'm sure she's sensitive to it after Hua Fei, and he tells her that Ling Rong made it personally to welcome her back. Yeah, no, get that out of here. She has Dr. Wen check the incense, and he says there are no problems with it. I would have dumped it anyway, but okay. He does tell her to be careful not to add Yilan flower to anything, as the combination would result in a really strong aphrodisiac. Jin Huan is then reunited with Fourth Prince. I mean, her totally biological son that she gave birth to. Luckily, they already like each other a lot. When they met in the Summer Palace way back in episode 13, they immediately hit it off and it's really thanks to her that he was finally able to get his father's attention. So it looks like they'll have no problems going forward and Fourth Prince finally has a mom. With that, she's back. With Jin Huan's return comes the awkward question of what to do with Long Yue. Jing Fei has been raising her and is her real mother in all the ways that matter. She obviously does not want to send her back to Jin Huan, but Jin Huan is her biological mom. Jing Fei begins to worry about what will happen. What the hell is going on with Longyue's voice acting? Her mouth isn't even moving. Jingfei finally brings Longyue in to see Junhuan. I can't even imagine what it would be like to meet with your child years after they were born. Jingfei tells Longyue that her mom is now Junhuan, and she takes it about as well as any three-year-old would. They really should have planned this better. Also, not to ruin the emotion here, but I can't help but be reminded of one of those scenes where the owner has to chase a dog away for its own good. Listen to me! Go! Get out of here! Jin Huan asks that Jing Fei continue to take care of Long Yue for the time being, and Jing Fei very happily agrees. Jin Huan is devastated, of course, but she has to get herself together as she has an appointment with the Empress Dowager. The Empress Dowager makes things really awkward with lots of kneeling and thinly veiled threats. She obviously wants to make sure Junhuan hasn't become too cocky and avoid another Hua Fei in the palace, but this was your idea. <laughs> Why did you bring me back if you were going to make this difficult? I'd be so annoyed if I was Junhuan. I also love how awkward Mei Zhuang looks watching the whole thing. Junhuan passes the Empress Dowager's inspection and is dismissed. As Junhuan is being carried home, her servants slip on stones that look like they've been purposely put in her path. Suspecting an attack, they decide to investigate where the pebbles came from. When the emperor comes to visit Jin Huan that night, she puts on a show of being so terrified that all she wants to do is hold him. Huan Bi then tells the emperor about what happened with the pebbles. Jin Huan is all like, oh please, don't investigate anything on my account, I'm fine. I mean, I almost died along with our unborn baby, but I'm fine, leave it alone. So yeah, he'll investigate. Mei Zhuang and Dr. Wen are finally getting somewhere. After Mei Zhuang gloomily says that now that Jin Huan is back, he will forget about her, Wen has an uncharacteristically sudden outburst and says of course he still cares about her. Aww. Roommates Qi Pian and Xin Guiren come to visit Jin Huan. The last time Jin Huan met them, they were both noble ladies, but even though Xin has been in the palace longer, with the Empress's support and a bit of flirting, Qi now outranks her. When they met, Xin was still quite respectful to Jin Huan while Qi was being dismissive, thinking Jin Huan was on her way out. Which she was, but now she's back. Based on how rude she is even to Jin Huan, you can imagine how she treats Xin Guiren. 
Chipin is pretty much a carbon copy of Dongchun from the first few episodes. Young and cocky because she's favored by the emperor, and the empress pretends she's on her side to get rid of her main opponent. When Huafei felt slighted, she found an excuse to kill Dongchun. Zhen Huan is much more tolerant. When Qi leaves, Xin outright asks Zhen Huan to help her get out from under Qi's thumb. She promises to devote herself to Zhen Huan completely. Looks like Zhen Huan might get her first official lackey. While it looks like Jingfei was doing her best to get Longye to accept Zhen Huan, when they're left alone, it becomes clear that this is not the case. She's not doing anything malicious, just kind of petty things, but she clearly doesn't want Longye to leave her, and I can't blame her. Zhen Huan is reunited with an old maid of hers who was reassigned to serve Xin Guiren after Zhen Huan left the palace. It seems that Xin was telling the truth. She is a tyrant and Xin seems to be a good, or at least not a bad person. She tries her best to stick up for the servants when Qi starts hitting them, but she simply doesn't have enough power. And the bullying doesn't just stop at the servants. When the emperor goes to see Xin for the first night in a long while, Qi pretends to have really bad nightmares and begs the emperor to come and see her. She manages to get the emperor to stay the night at her place, leaving poor Xin Guiren alone for the night. Don't think for a moment that I don't blame the emperor for this as well, he is so frustrating. When Jin Huan gets the news about what she did, she decides that maybe she should try and protect Xin, or at least knock Qi down a peg. She sends her servant to Qi's palace with a really bitter medicine meant to stop nightmares. The servant delivers the medicine in front of the emperor with Jin Huan's message to drink up. Qi starts throwing a fit, and the emperor responds that if she doesn't drink it, that means she's been faking her nightmares and tricking him. She has no choice but to down it in front of him. It's a petty revenge, but that coupled with a stern scolding later gets the emperor to act more reasonably. For now, anyway. When the Empress Dowager gets the news, she's impressed with Jun Huan's tact and sure she made the right choice in bringing her back. Fourth Prince is also getting valuable lessons from his new mom on how to handle their enemies. So, Jing Fei, totally understandable, I get it. When Jun Huan left, she was never supposed to come back, and you can't raise a child from infancy and not end up loving it. And of course, Long Yue doesn't want to leave her mom and go to live with some random new woman. Also, Zhen Huan's new look. Good for intimidating young upstarts, but not so good for getting kids to like you. Anyway, we'll see where that goes. In the meantime, can we talk about how cool Zhen Huan is now? Her return has been flawless, 10 out of 10. That nightmare medicine alone, brilliant. With that one move, she put Qi in her place, sent a message to the other would-be tricksters, and now she has a new ally in Xin Guiren. She knows exactly how to handle the new girls, how to handle the emperor, the empress dowager, and while we haven't really gotten back into it with our main villains, the empress and Ling Rong, they don't know what they're in for. She's no longer the young, innocent girl they knew before. I mean, she's 32 now. Till next time, thanks for watching.